Welcome back to the show. It's still Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can join us on social media at Plus TV Africa and on Instagram and on Twitter. And of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, youtube.com forward slash Plus TV Africa. And our website is Plus TV Africa.com. I've got two amazing guests in, on the show today. I've got Steve Austin on Wabuese and uh, Ibidoni Aino. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Quite calm, cool, calm, and collected. Good morning, Udoka. Good morning, Lagos. <laughs> morning, Lagos. And of course, Steve heads the sports and entertainment law group of the firm, Petstone and Grace Limited, while Doin is an associate in the firm sports and entertainment law department. And Ibi Doin is a passionate. She's a passionate football player and a staunch advocate of female football development. Now, before I get into um, what we'll be talking about today, I'd like to put Doin on the hot seat now. Yeah, she plays, you, 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 play foot, you played football or you still play football? I, I do play football, but for fun now. I played oh. yeah, very well while I was in school for oh. a while, yes. Well, yeah, you didn't intend to go pro? I wanted to. I, uh, I joined an academy. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I, I thought about it while I was in school, while I joined the academy. First of all, I couldn't, I couldn't balance being in an academy and also studying to be a lawyer. Mm. So I had to choose one. And, you know, while making my decision, I looked at the regulations. I looked at how football is run in Nigeria mm. and also looking at female football. The fact that there are some loopholes, there are some things that need to be, uh, to be worked on mm. from the legal perspective for football and for yeah. sports in Nigeria. So I decided to uh, focus more on the legal aspect but still not, uh, you know, giving up everything in football. So I play football once in a while. Okay, and uh, look, looking at that now, was, it, was there any parental influence on your decision on focusing on um, academics? Okay, well, yeah, there's usually that, you know, because um, it's just now that we see that um, football is very lucrative, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are making a lot more money from football. Uh, then growing up, yes, there was a little bit of influence. Although when I was young, you know, uh, we, we had this, um, we had this, uh, field close to our house so every saturday the whole family goes there to play football okay. you know my, my 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 brothers and my father on one team my mom my sister and i on one team so it was it's really a football family it's, <laughs> we love football so it was really it was really it was fun mm. then but eventually growing up you know um uh, we want you to be a professional, yeah. and then you know I had to I had to choose one. So yes, there's a little bit of parental influence, but I also made a decision myself. Okay, making a personal decision, and of course uh, uh, the parental influence guarding our decisions. Now, Steve, um, from what she has said, I think we should take it from from there. Um, she said something about female football not being. Um, as the creative, but yeah. these days we're beginning to see most of those international players making more money than we have the local base players um, making. Now, female football, what would you say? Because that, there was a time that they were actually uh, crying for equal pay along with the men. Would you want that to be the case for the, the female uh, in, in sports? Well, um, I wouldn't put it that way mm -hmm. I, in the sense that everybody knows, with all due respect to the female players, mm -hmm. The cash cow for Nigerian football has always been the super eagles. Super eagles. So most times, what you get as a team, mm -hmm. be it the super eagles or super falcons, is commensurate with the commercial attraction mm -hmm. you bring to the table. So what does the super falcons as a team bring to the table? I think that is usually the consideration. It's not an outright discrimination against the female football mm -hmm. team. What they are trying to do is to make sure, put them on an equal commercial footing. Yeah. And that is a duty, I think, the Football Federation itself, as a body, mm -hmm. needs to ensure that they get sponsors for the female football team, uh, get kits, get all sorts of commercial endorsements, mm -hmm. so that they can be on the same footing. Yeah. With, uh, because when you consider the trophy hall of both teams, you can't even compare the Super Falcons with the Super Eagles. The Super Falcons have, they have won more, yeah. lots of trophies mm -hmm. for Nigeria. So, speaking strictly on the issue of equality, yes, they are entitled to be given equal attention, not necessarily equal pay. Mm -hmm. that's, the way, that's the way I put it. Yeah. So, attention should now be channeled towards commercializing female football in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that is where regulation comes into play. Yeah. Uh, how many of the academies are, are strictly regulated and where are the regulations? Mm. What, what is the NFF as a body doing to ensure that female football does not die? Mm. Uh, there was a time in, in, the, in Africa when we used to, it was almost a given that we go to any tournament in Africa, we win the trophy. Mm. But you had Equatorial Guinea 
in recent times, you had Ghana, you had South Africa. In recent mm -hmm. times, we couldn't even qualify for the under-20 yes. uh, female World Cup. Yeah. So it has become a problem. So mm -hmm. that developmental um, angle of it is what the federation, what federation should look at and look mm -hmm. at also commercializing it to put it at par mm -hmm. with the male team. Mm -hmm. I think that's... Okay, now let's, let's bring it out to the Nigerian Professional Football League now because a lot of people have been asking questions. Um, what is the law guarding the Nigerian Professional Football League when it comes to transfer of players? And uh, I, for one, have done a bit of research and um, I, I know how things are being done in Europe when players are signed and uh, we're all excited. When we see a name of a player, we look at the contract. How, how long is the contract for? How many years contract did he sign? Then how much will be his pay? And what is the transfer fee? But in the Nigerian Professional Football League, it's a bit different. Uh, this, there's a lot of um, um, absent-minded organization of how players have been signed when it comes to data collect, uh, collation of these players. What would be your um, say on how things are run in the MPFL? Um, okay. okay. The, 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 what I would say is the first problem we have in uh, professional football is mm. the bit of secrecy. Mm. You know, we, like you said, we, are, we, know the, we know what's going on, we know yeah. the contract, we know for how long it's been signed, mm -hmm. we know the, the amount of, you know, we know the salary and, yeah. and, you know, the contract sum. But for here, for, for Nigeria, it's, it's a little bit secret. Things are just done, you know, with no regard to the law. Mm. And, you know, players can just, you can just wake up one morning and sign a player and then mm. tomorrow say you don't want the player again. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no regard for the contract, no regard for the laws. Obviously, the, L, um, the MPFL have their own rules. Yeah. So they have their rules regarding um, signing of, of, you know, players, transfer and all that. Mm -hmm. But, but they, are not, they are not strict. They are not and they are not ensuring that uh, you know uh, um, clubs stick with these rules mm. strictly. Mm. Now, is it is it a case of um, Steve? Is it a case of the clubs not wanting to disclose how much the club is worth? Because there are times I see a particular club sign 16 players as a, as a goal. And I ask myself, what happens to the ones that you have? Are you going to sell them to other clubs or are you going to keep them in the club and owe them salaries? A lot of times these things have happened. What can we even do to correct this thing? Okay, good. The interesting part about Nigeria Football League is that um, people say there are no regulations. Mm. We do have regulations. Do the we follow problem, them? The problem is the political will mm. to enforce those regulations. Why do I say so? Um, you look at the MPFL has the MPFL framework rules guiding the activities in the league. Now, usually, uh, there are stipulations as to what the minimum clauses uh, that should be contained in a player's contract mm. should contain. Now, um, you have the issue of the minimum wage. Mm. There's a provision in the LMC rules that says that, okay, the minimum wage shall be 150,000. Mm. How many of the clubs are even complying with that? Mm. And sometimes you see some kind of complicity even from the board itself. The board doesn't clamp down on some of these um, breaches, patent breaches mm -hmm. of its regulations. Mm -hmm. So again, you, you look at the, our, even our own um, disposition as a people mm. here in the country, we, we don't really want to follow the rules. Now, you talked about the regulations guiding transfers. FIFA as a body has the regulations on the status and transfer, transfer of players, players mm -hmm. which applies universally to everybody, every player, every, every professional player. Yeah. Now there are stipulations there that I'm not sure we have really domesticated mm. in Nigeria. It is also part of the problem. Now, the government ownership of the clubs is not it's helping matters. Problem, yes. There's a provision in the LMC rules that requires the government to divest 50% of its equity in every club mm. it owns from, as from 2015 till now. Mm. Now, look at the number of clubs in the MPFL. How many of them are actually owned by individuals? Mm. And um, the documentation is not even there. Mm. You don't have a database where you can easily access the movement of the players and track them. So that has, that has been an issue and probably something that the LMC as a body needs to sit down and have some sort of round table with the clubs and iron out.